Um, my name is Jason Motney. I'm obviously with ISIS. I'm the president and CEO. We actually have uh, Mr. Coper right here is one of our CEOs, and Mr. Weiler, wherever he is, I'm one of our CEOs as well. We have about six other individuals that are involved that aren't here tonight um, because of things that they have going on. But uh, I would definitely like to thank everybody that's shown up and for our support um, and what we do every day. I'd like to take a moment to discuss on why ISIS exists, because that's the, <clears throat> excuse me, that seems to be the topic of interest for the past, you know, month in the city of Flint. I actually, um, as a child, was raped and it was never solved. You know, there was no justice because they're our future. And the thing is, is that I've been told several times by several people that people that have went through the things that I went through and others sometimes don't have the strength to fight back. They don't have the strength to you know, speak out, especially being male. So I'm trying to actually form with ISIS and with my other people a support group as well within ISIS for child crimes or abuse or even sexual crimes in nature. You know, and those programs are free of charge to the public. Everything that we offer to the public is free. We don't charge a family at all to do, to profile a crime or to do crime analysis. And the reason why is because that family has been at such a loss already that the last thing that they need is for someone to say, sure, I'll solve your case, but you're, it's going to cost you money. You know, um, The support system that we have within ISIS to be able to support the community is strong. We have been through a lot in the past six and a half to seven months since we've been incorporated. We are the first nonprofit in existence in the United States for crime analysis. And we are forging our way and actually, we are setting the standard in a sense because we've had to explain ourselves so many times in the past, you know, six months on how a nonprofit can do crime analysis in the first place. Um, you know, but with our experience and other things, we have people that are certified in arson investigation through the state police which is Mr. Coper, and we have every member of ISIS, almost every member of ISIS has been a member of the, the military, or they've been in some form of law enforcement, or in the private sector doing private investigative work, and things like that. Um, as far as our, our goal for ISIS within the next few months is to create such a support structure within the community through volunteers is so that we can literally, when a, a missing child, when we get called on a missing child, we can activate volunteers all over the city to start looking. And the problem is, is that the way that the law is written, the Amber Alert could take days sometimes, depending on the type of um, abduction, okay? Mm -hmm. And usually there's only three types of kidnappings. It's either a kidnapper that's a family member, which is parental kidnapping, you have a kidnapper for ransom, which is very rarely ever going to happen. And then you have a kidnapper that plans to do something to that child, which is the most common. And you have hours, sometimes only minutes, to find that child. By the time the police department responds, sometimes it may take 24 hours before they actually deem the child being missing. <laughs> ISIS offers a program to where a parent can contact us as soon as that child is missing, and we will immediately respond to it immediately, meaning that I don't care if it's 3 o'clock in the morning and we get a call. Our office is forwarded to somebody's cell phone at all times. So what will happen is, is that we will immediately respond to whatever city it is within Genesee County, Lapeer County, Tuscola County, and Saginaw County, you know, to, to respond to a missing child. And eventually it would be the whole state. Now. Every dollar that ISIS raises through any program goes directly into our programs that we have. Not one ISIS employee makes a paycheck. Every hour that they spend at our building is, a, is an hour that they donate to us. Everyone is a volunteer. I work about 60 hours a week and I'm a full-time college student. I'm working toward a degree in forensic psychology, or a PhD, I'm sorry, in forensic psychology. So all of this on top of it is a field study for myself, you know. 
what we encourage is the general public, even yourselves, members of the community, members of Genesee County, members of Lapeer County, <coughs> to join up with ISIS as a volunteer so that we can take that collective knowledge because ISIS is not a group of individuals. It's not just a nonprofit organization that only has a few members. It's the whole country. And that's what we really want people to understand. It's, it's you, it's you, it's everybody in this room. Because everyone's collective knowledge in this room could help solve that case. Your life experience might be able to help a family that is going through a rough time. We have crisis intervention programs where if a family has a missing child or if a family even goes through something as bad as a house fire, we will send our guys to that house with food, with water, with shelter, with clothes, with whatever. We're trying to unite all of the nonprofits in the county and eventually in the state so that we can have faster response times. That way when there's a call made for any disaster whatsoever or crisis, whether it be a missing child to a fire, that we can have people there to protect that family, to keep that family safe, to keep that family fed, warm, and comfortable as they can be in a situation like that. When our organization was founded, it was like a phoenix rising from the ashes. And when I say that, was because we were all part of another organization. And when it went down in flames, we decided we didn't want to be part of it. We wanted to do this for free for the general public because at the end of the day, I have children myself. I would want somebody out there to fight for my children as hard as we fight for everyone else's. You know, and there's a lot of people in the world that really have given up on society. ISIS is trying to show people that there's people out there that still exist that care. People who will fight for your rights, people who will fight for your children, people who will fight for your life itself. And we will lay on our line, lay our life on the line on a daily basis to make sure that you all are safe and that your families are safe. And I also talked to our board members uh, a little bit ago. Today I talked to them, those two, and I talked to the other ones, and actually we had one more person that we were wanting to put on our board of directors, and that was actually Rhonda. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, we figure this is the thing, and what I mean by ISIS is, and ISIS being everybody, is Rhonda was a teacher in Flint City. She's used to dealing with, with children that have troubled lives. And, you know, even through the troubles that I've been through in my past, I don't have the knowledge, the collective knowledge that she has. So when ISIS grows as an organism and as a family, they can accept people like her to become in a leadership position so that she can help take her collective knowledge as being a teacher in the city of Flint and be able to help us make decisions to make not only our organization stronger, but more effective. So we would like to formally ask you <laughs> on, on camera and in front of us. No pressure or anything. <laughs> wow, um, I, um, I'm honored and of course I accept. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. Okay. And then one other thing um, that hasn't been made formal yet but is going to be is that um, Terry and Rhonda are actually uh, were brought on as profilers and have been going through a training process to become profilers for our organization. And actually had looked into a couple cases that we've had. Yeah, we think we solved them. And have done an absolutely extraordinary job. And that's another point of what I meant by people volunteering. Somebody who doesn't think that they would even be able to do that for a living, you know, could volunteer an hour of their time, two hours of their time a month, to just look at something. To say, well, I'm an outside perspective. Let me look at that. And they might have the key that it takes to solve the crime. It happens all the time. They have cases that I gave them to look into, and they brought things to light that not even we picked up on. And we do this every day. Sometimes it takes somebody new to look at something, you know. So, but I would like to thank you guys all again for coming. Um, all of these beautiful chairs that the community has came to donate to us to raffle off. Um, actually, we have two individuals from Lapeer that are from the Justice for Lily 
um, page on Facebook and organization. And um, I would also I would also like to assure that they're having a they're having a crop what's it called again? Crop and craft. A crop and craft on February eighteenth right. in Lapeer to support that family because that trial is coming up soon. Right. And so all the, anybody that and all the would fun like to do that. all the profits right now we've raised twelve hundred dollars um, as of today. And all of those profits will go to child advocacy of Lapeer. Okay. So. Outstanding. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.